not the best for the country because of the challenges in the system today. Don't put words in my mouth. We are not like that. So well, maybe, maybe this we don't have like well. animals. Hello, you are welcome to Head to Head, your non-diplomatic talk show, where we say it just the way it is, no matter whose ox is God. My name is Eshogono Imodu, and with me on the top today to take a look at the happenings, not just in Nigeria, but also in our neighboring Benin Republic, as our public affairs analysts, and also the former Dean, Faculty of Business, Admin, and Management Sciences, Udobe North America University, Kutonu, talking about Professor Simeon Na. Nice to have you join me today. Thank you very Let's much. This way. <laughs> the man from the Ivory Tower. Tell us. North American University in Kutono and not in Nigeria. How did you migrate to Kutono? Well, it's a long story, but let's cut it short. You know, when Asu was having his challenges here and, um, mm. you know, the school in Kutono was running seamlessly. Uh, they run their three semesters, including summer and what have you, and everything was moving on seamlessly. So. And again, in 2015, it became obvious that um, APC was going to win that um, election. APC? Yes, and I knew as a strategic manager that uh, things were not going to be business as usual. Mm -hmm. um, because aside from lecturing, I'm a consultant. Okay. And I know that um, the things will not flow the way it used to, to, to be. So I had to look for greener pastures. In fact, that was one of my major reasons. Oh, oh, so you had the premonition that yeah. APC was not going to manage the system very well. <laughs> because no, you not, say it was not, not going not to flow. Not, not manage, not manage per se. I had the premonition that um, things were going to be tight, just like uh, uh, my prediction was okay because I I was I was not a baby in 1983 84. Uh, 1984 I had taught for like four years five years mm. as a trained teacher not as an auxiliary teacher so I knew mm. what happened there you know the economy was like a closed economy kind of uh, we had uh, marketing boards and people were queuing to buy essential commodities and what have you. You know, and Until this present president struck. Yeah. No, 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 no. He was the person that even brought what I'm saying now. No, he destroyed the marketing board. Remember, part of the things he tried to dis dismantle was the marketing board. And the, what was the national supply, whatever. There was another board that was created that was, you know, actually uh, giving out those um, essential commodities. I'm saying that, was it Nigerian national supply, whatever, you see? that was given out as the only good thing about that was that if you were unable to get the essential commodity today your name will be written down so that mm. when you come in tomorrow you'll be among the first that will be served no uh, let, truth be told in 1983 the economy was bastardized by the shagari okay. administration but when the buhari government came in we thought things were going to get better but naturally, things didn't get better. Things went from what it was to something else. Though they were telling us that, well, it's going to go bad and it's going to come back. But then... Now, now and you were, all this while when the government, this present administration came on board, yeah. you were already in Kutono. You moved into Kutono to Benin Republic. Yeah, I moved so, in, so, I moved so in So what general. was it like? What was it like over there? Was it better than what we have here in Nigeria? Of course, they have, a, they have a seamless economy. I can tell you for free, and you can go and check. Apart from recently, maybe like four or five months ago, prices of goods and commodities in Kutunu are stable. The things you bought for maybe uh, 2007. they were feeding from the exportation, from the smuggling out of Nigeria. Uh, maybe, maybe, I don't know. I'm not a smuggler, I'm not a custom person, so I wouldn't know about but that. But as an academic, you would know this. Uh, I know that things move across the border, but... I, you didn't I, I, know if they were legally. 
Well, uh, yes, I don't know whether they were legally or legally until government now began to pronounce that certain things should not be allowed to cross the border, you know. Because before, before now, government had tried one or two occasions to stop the importation of vehicles from Republic of Benin, but it wasn't now, working. Now, now, while you were in Benin Republic, did you hear about smuggling of fuel into Benin Republic? Of course. It, 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 that business is still going on. Now, when the government moved against it and closed the border, were you surprised? I was not or surprised. Or you were expecting that government, one government in Nigeria should be able to move? No, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised, but um, my question was, those fuel were not uh, smuggled with just jerry cans. Yes, I know the jerry can people do there, but they were smuggled with trucks too. So what are we saying? We are just lying to ourselves because we know that that business is thriving. So for government to come up and say we are closing down the border because we don't want this to continue. Well, it's a good one, but truth be told, the business is going on and the people that are allowing those businesses to go on, they know themselves. Now, now, now let's, let's take a deeper look at the system in Benin Republic vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the system in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, for them, it is good that this smuggling business thrives yeah. because that is, that is what oils their economy. Exactly. Now, when the Nigerian government moved against the Benin Republic government, how, what was their reaction like? No, naturally, when Nigeria sneezes, the West African coast, they catch cold. Mm. So when that nozzle was tightened, it affected the economy badly. It affected the economy badly. Things stopped working. And Republic of Benin. In fact, I, I learned that the president of uh, Republic of Benin had to come to the president to beg, had to come to our president to beg that the border should be opened. Now, now, now uh, 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 I also learned in some quarters that it was not just about the smuggling that made Nigeria to move against, to close its border, that there were some other underlining issues no, that were not too clear. Nat naturally, in diplomatic circles, mm. you don't tell the truth. Always. But do you know those truths? Yeah, there are some truths that we know. Now, there can you tell truths. us some of those truths that you know? For instance, uh, Republic of Benin, the president woke up one morning, Patrick Stallone, woke up one morning and asked the glow man to leave Republic of Benin. I don't understand. Which glow man? The Adenuga. Oh, the okay, okay. Glow. Our glow in Nigeria to glow. leave. Yeah, glow, glow had an office in, in Republic of Benin. Glow was functioning in Republic okay, of okay. Benin. Could we just, because of this discussion, mm. say a telecommunication? Yeah, a telecommunication okay. company. I from don't want Nigeria. names mentioned now. Okay, from Nigeria to leave. Okay. And um, the, the man asked, well, no, it started this way. He said he had to pay taxes. That has been owing taxes for over two billion. The man said, you only pay taxes from profits. I've been making losses in the Republic of Benin. The funds I'm using to run the, glow, the, the, the telecommunication in Benin, I get them from Nigeria. He said, well, if you can't do that, you leave the country. So the man left the country without a pin. So that president acted in the best interest of his country. Well, if you say so, you but, have to pay tax. But, but the, no, you don't pay tax from losses. It's not done anywhere in the world. There are books. The, the company has books. Go to the books. Check the books. If it's, so, if so it's making if you profit, don't pay tax from losses, is yeah. the losses, was it because of your mismanagement or what? No, because the country is not that big enough, you know. Maybe because of the uh, technology that he deployed to that place, he was not making enough to pay his uh, overheads and what have you. That's, that's my understanding of that. Okay. And it's not... Uh, it's not uncommon that people make losses, make investments outside their domain and they make losses. So what would have expected that he would have gone through his books, seen the profits he has made, and from those profits now ask for taxes, not when somebody is making losses. And it's, or when somebody claims he's making or losses. Or when somebody claims he's making losses. Okay. Now, even if he claims he's making losses, the books are there. So send the so, auditors. So, so there was no due diligence. Uh, yes, think. send the auditors to go and check. If he actually making profit, you now bring it to public glare. Look, you are making profits here. So why are you lying that you're making losses? So, so, you can even so penalize what, the what is this nexus? Why would the president now, does it have anything to do with the Nigerian president concerning border closure? 
Um, well, somehow, yes, he does. Because again, uh, he pounced on one of the richest men in Africa today and said he shouldn't ply his roads again, that he's spoiling his roads with his trucks and what have you. That he had to pay another, and I don't know whether he has a pigeon for two billion, you know. And the man said, where am I going to get the money from? Okay, show me the roads, I will repair them. Mm. He said, no, you can't give us a quality. The man said, I have a construction company. Show us the roads, give us the quality, we'll be able to deliver. If we don't deliver, that is the time you will now come back to us. He said, no. It's either you pay the money or you don't ply my roads again. That is the president of his country speaking. Yeah, yes. So, so you, are bound by, you are bound to obey him. Yeah, you are bound to obey him. So we are equally bound to teach him a lesson. What is the lesson? So the you Nigerian taught? government taught him a little lesson. Oh, no. He moved against a telecommunication. Yes. He, he moved, moved against, against a construction uh, yes, giant. Yes. The Nigerian government acted to protect those. Yes, to protect the citizens because nobody knew the next person he was going to pounce on. But they told us it was smuggling. Was has it anything to do? They told us it was smuggling. What what is smuggling? The the businessman that was plying the smuggle the rice, the smuggle into Nigeria, destroy our, no, no, our local you industry. See, you see the, the truth. The truth is that in diplomatic circles, you don't say the truth. You we don't tell say lies. The truth. Yes, we, we tell, tell lies. lies. We tell lies. I can give you an example. America woke up one morning and said um, they are going to destroy Iraq because they have weapons of mass destruction. Mm. First of all, they said they should allow them to examine the armory because mm. they have weapons of mass destruction. And they know in international circles it's not allowed. You cannot be allowed to go and inspect the armory of a, a the sovereign, sovereign nation. nation. So Iraq said, no, you can't do that. They said, well, if you, if you cannot do that, we'll destroy you. That was not the... When they now finished, they came back to tell the truth that no, they didn't see weapons of mass destruction. But the truth was that. Iraq annexed Kuwait, and Kuwait is an already rich nation, and America had interest in Kuwait. So, but they can't come out to say, because of our interest in Kuwait, we will stop Iraq. No. no, no. But in this instance, this example you just gave, yeah. the U.S. came out and admitted later on and said there was something in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. Now, do you see the Nigerian government coming to own up that the border closure was not just because of this smuggling, it was because we needed to protect certain no, Money no you, you see, they don't need to do that. Why, why, they, why don't they need to do that? Because the reason they don't gave they to we are German. The reasons they gave were equally German. So no, has, it, has the smuggling stopped? No, it has not stopped. So but it's it has not reduced. German. It has reduced. So it's not German. It has reduced. It has reduced. Whether we like it or yes, it has reduced tremendously too. Because the, the porous nature of the borders are, then had been... Um, managed effectively now, so it's not business as usual. No, no. I, I was thinking with all this border closure that you bring some people to book. You have the customs there. Yeah. You have all those people, which means you have not lived up to expectation. You have uh, probably the military, other other organization guiding the borders. What have you done? So if the government is saying, okay, smuggling, the smuggling asked of outside the country, simply shows that the border is porous, mm -hmm. and which means your security is not strong enough. So that's an indictment on your own system. That, that's an indictment, but not uh, you can't say that wholly because um, there are so many uh, entries and exits from the country. So many of them. So if you so go through, if you go through the uh, Joroko axis, you have so many avenues that people can use to beat security. Mm. You come through the uh, semi axis. There are so, so many. many porous uh, 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 exits and entries that people can use to beat the, the, the Nigerian customs, they are trying their best. Okay, they are trying their best. We'll, we'll just stay on are... this particular. Now we'll go on this quick break and when we come back, there are issues about the Nigerian next president and about the politics of the Southeast that we need to take a look at. Please stay with us. It's not the best for the country because of the challenges in the system today. Don't put words in my mouth. We are not like that. So maybe, maybe this we don't act like, like well. animals. Hello, you're welcome back. If you're just joining us, I've been speaking with Professor Simeon Unna. He uh, was a former dean faculty of business administration and management sciences at Hudobi University of uh, North American University. 
in Kutano Benin Republic. Now, Prof, you are an Igbo man. Of course. Yes. And we can't say all is well with the Southeast. Yeah, we cannot say that. Don't you think that your own people are also responsible for what is happening in your land? How? I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand how they are responsible. Because um, this agitation came to its peak in this administration. And it is basically because they were kind of ostracized from the country. No, they were, they, so let's take you back a bit yes. to the last election we had yes. in Anambra State. Okay. Just before the election, the elders mm -hmm. called for ceasefire yeah. and asked that the seat at home should be vacated, the okay. election should hold. Okay. Did the election hold or not? The election was held. Did the boys listen to the elders or not? They did. Then I ask you, what has the elders been doing all this while? that these boys were on the streets. Was it that the elders knew that if we talk to them, they will listen, but let's use them as our militants to negotiate, and the elders always look the other way? Don't you think so? No, 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 I don't think so, because they have never looked the other way. They have been talking, maybe what- But they have not talked said. the way they talked during this election. Uh, why, why they got to its peak was that you discovered the killings were one too many. So everybody was sitting at the edge. Nobody knew who next is going to be. So at that point... So it was a became, case of self-preservation. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. You know, Not because they because, wanted it to cease. No, no, they actually wanted to cease. But again, before you, you, you look at seizing the fire, you are going to look at, you are going to ask questions. And that's why they said, let's have a political solution to this problem. People are asking questions. People are saying, I'm not happy about the situation. And you are telling them it's not negotiable. People not are done. saying we want to get out of the country, not that we are not happy. How will you say you want to get out of the country and I will keep quiet? Okay. The government will keep quiet. Okay. Now, what led to saying we want to get out of the country? Let's ask this this way first. Now, do you think it is right that you want to succeed? To succeed? Is do it I right? Think, do I think it's right? Yes, to say no, you want it, to break away from Nigeria. It depends on how you look at it. The way I look at it is that you are the president of Nigeria, for instance. Yes. And some groups come up and say, look, we want to break away from Nigeria. Will you sit back, fold your hands and watch them? No, I will not sit back and watch them. But if they are asking for something that is germane, we need to look at it. We need to what sit at the round table for is and we want to break away. Mm -hmm. That is what they ask for. You see, they, they said, let's have... Um, Let's have, um, what is it called again? A conference. Let's have, um, um, I'm looking for the word now. The national conference. Not the national conference per se. They are talking of uh, where people will come and uh, uh, vote whether they want a referendum. To, a referendum. Under that's which platform? That's, you know the Nigerian what? constitution. I know the, uh, yeah. Do you I have know, a provision for a referendum in Nigerian constitution? Well, what we have today is not what should be called the constitution. But you have it today. Yeah, because we, the, the opening page, we, the people of Nigeria, is a fraud. Prof, we'll get to that one. It's a fraud. Do you believe in the election that just took place in Anambra State? Believe. It depends on what you mean. Do you support the emergence of, 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 of Soludo? A credible candidate. So you believe in that process that producing the process was credible? Yeah, well, to, to a large extent. So do you believe that there was a constitution that brought this process to be? Well, um, I believe that there were people that came together to ensure... Because the constitution things, created that there should be an election, that you believed in it, you submitted the, to the, that. The constitution said, I didn't submit because I didn't vote. So but the, but you, like the emergence, you like the emergence of this no, man. No, I like the emergence of so the man what because he's a credible candidate. Exactly, what I'm saying, in essence, is that whether we like it or not, there is a constitution. Well, it might not be the perfect one we wanted, yes. but there is a constitution. Yeah, that's, so, a, so document, as, that's there a document, is a document that is called the constitution. And we are bound by that document that is called the constitution. Don't you think so? Well, to, to a very large extent, we can argue that that, const that paper does not... Uh, uh, should not be properly uh, addressed to as a constitution. So because if you don't want there are it, so many lacunas prof, in that document. Agreed, agreed. Now, if you want to invalidate that document, what is the process? What is the step you should take? The step we should take is that let there be a conference. Let there be now, a, a conference. Under, this, under which law will you call, 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 call a referendum that you are asking for? Under which law? You see, we have said that the constitution as it is, 
is not a document that should be referred to as a constitution because of the emergence. How can two, three people stay in a room and write a document and doctor a document and you call it a constitution? And no. this, this same document no. produced the governors. This same document produced your representatives and you don't believe in them. You see, uh, the truth is that there's, a, there's a, um, a maxim in law that you don't build something on nothing. Hmm. You don't build something on nothing. Hmm. You see, that constitution is a fraud, as far as I'm concerned. And that's not the first time. From 2014, I've been saying that, that look at that constitution. The, the opening page, we, the people, I'm not part of that we, because I didn't elect anybody to go and represent me in a, in a constitutional assembly. Have you, to have, you, have, you, have you ever voted in Nigeria? Have yes, I have. I have. Why even did you even vote? in 1979, I why was did, a Why did you officer. vote? Is it not because that this constitution said you should vote? Why did you vote? If you don't believe in it, you shouldn't have voted. Now, listen. The, the point is that, again, when you stay home, that you are not going to vote because you can't change the, the system. You can't change the system. Now, you allow people that are not supposed to be there to, to, go, there. to go there. Exactly. So, and again, when they go there, you, you don't have mouth to come and talk. So, because what I'm saying in essence is this document is not a perfect one, but it is the document that binds it us. It is not a good one. Not it is not, it is not, not a good about, one, but it does bind now. us. It binds us. Well, uh, to some extent, yes. So, but, we so, are committed to it because if we carry out actions that negate it, we err on the side of law, is that not? But so many people have carried out actions that negate so it. When, so, when a man says, I want to break away from Nigeria, what has he done? Carry out an action that negates this, okay, okay. this document that okay, is not let me, good. Let me follow you from that point of no, view. No, let's follow what the no, law the is country, saying. No, the country, the, that same document you are calling today said Nigeria is a secular state. Mm. And somebody said, uh, somebody have gone ahead to declare instead a Sharia state. Has he not gone against that document you call it? He should be dealt with. Then why are we not dealing with them? But the same man that was no, there at that time. Why are we not dealing with them? Was a Christian. Hmm? Former President Obasanjo yes. was in charge. Yes. Why did he look the other way? Why didn't he deal with them? Okay. If he didn't deal with them, does it mean any other person cannot deal with them? Now, why would somebody now turn, turn around and deal with others and leave that down? That's sectional. If you wanted to deal with them, you would deal with everybody squarely. That's, the, that's, that's how to be fair. You don't treat others like with kick gloves and now want to destroy others. No, it's not done anywhere in the world. So it's this government has not been fair enough. It has not been fair enough. It has been selected, that's what you're trying to say. I've said that several times. It has not been fair enough. And there's no point in my words about that. Yeah, yeah, but because, they know, they know because, the because you are from the East and you are an Igbo man, that is my interest in yeah. IPOP, in the agitation of the Southeast. Now, do you really think your representatives, your leaders, your governors have done well for your, for your region? I don't think that some of them have done well, but it's a matter of uh, opinion. It's a matter of perception. Or the matter of reality and uh, facts. Uh, well, um, well, uh, when you look at it, you see, when you want to compare, you look at them vis-a-vis -vis the other state governors. Are they faring better? Apart from maybe Lagos and Rivers, that's doing exceptionally well. Which other states can you mention? No, now? there was a time Ogun did very well. Uh, there was a time. I get them before Nobi property. That, I don't know if you're doing well now. <laughs> I'm just trying to say, yeah, <laughs> Ogun did well. Yeah. Uh, there. They rose mm. from one point, they rose to the other. Mm. Yeah, you, now, you, what, you see, my interest Southeast. also, as a Southeastern, have yeah. you sat back to look at Ariara markets? Have you sat back to look at Onicha? Have you sat back to look at the industry? Yeah the commerce in the yeah. Southeast. Yes. And why is it difficult for the Southeast leaders to create an, a, a commerce hub for that region? Well, have you sat back to look at it? Well, I have. And let does me it tell bother you, you as a leader? It, it, it does. And let me tell you certain things that people might not know. Now, government, I'm not talking of this particular government alone. Okay. Gov successive government has made it impossible for Southeasterners to thrive in their businesses. They have not created the enabling environment. I can go on and on and on and give you instances and examples. Now, give me the reason why the Obasanjo regime closed down the Ibeto cement, for instance. No reason. No German Probably reason. somebody will also say just the way you said. No, 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 the... but, but yeah, I, do, I came and gave it back to him. Mm. Gave it back to his license. Mm. And mm. then a Jonathan came and the same Obasanjo mounted pressure on Jonathan and he withdrew the license again. Now, I'm going to tell you again. 
Now, this guy in uh, Anambra, what's his name again? Um, the motor guy. Innocent. Innocent. Now, started well. At a point, the government wanted to encourage. And invariably, he that had... Is exactly, that on, is exactly my on. argument. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me land. Okay. Now, he borrowed money from GT. Overpaid. Mm. And at the end of the day, GT now, when he now discovered that he has overpaid, he said, refund the money. With the interest, I was paid. And GT said, if I refund the money with the interest you are paid, we are going to be bankrupt. So GT wanted to bankrupt him. That's, that's what it means. No, no, and no, at the end of the no, day, no, no. they now came up with an alibi. And federal government is backing them up. No, no. You say federal government is backing up. That is what I'm saying. You have this uh, car manufacturer, even beyond the, before the yes. car manufacturer, you had the average Igbo man who is able to make shoes and make clothes. And they even call it the Igbo maid. Even go to, now, go to, now, go to now, now, Newe, for instance. How has the Southeastern leaders, yes. how has the Southeast states mm. invested in this small scale sector to grow it? I can tell you in Abia, for instance, the, the governor took most of these fabric makers to China, both shoe and dresses, and there's a whole. Is he wearing, is his team using those products? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know, but but let me come. But, but I, the vice president even because, went to a bar. Just because the of vice time. president even went to a bar and said that they will be patronizing. Even the soldiers will be patronizing the boots that were made from those factories. So you are they be, doing that? That's a question which was then also let us ask: Are your southeast leaders doing it? Well, well, if they are not doing it, people will not. They will not be doing the business. Some of them are still patronizing. Professor, them. Now, yeah. Sam, Simeon, Ina. Yeah. I would have loved to continue with this discussion, but definitely time is not on our side. Thank you so much for being part of this. You're welcome. Now, that is all time will permit us to take on this particular edition of Head to Head. Let's make it another opportunity next week on the same platform when I bring you another interesting guest. I remain yours sincerely, Shomomo Imodu. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.